you like to call to order the meeting of Monday, April the 26th. And if the clerk would please take the roll and please remember to say where you are remotely as far as your city. Council member Archibald. Here, Port Huron. Council member Ashford. Present, Port Huron. Council member Lamb. Here, Port Huron. Council member Mosierak. Here, Port Huron. Council member Pemberton. Here, Port Huron. Council member Ruiz. Here, Port Huron. Mayor Rep. Here, remotely in Port Huron. You have the minutes before you from the meeting of April 12th. Is there a motion to receive and file? So moved, Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a motion by Council Member Ashford, supported by Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Is there any changes to the minutes? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes will stand as submitted. We'll go right into public comment. Uh, this is the time if there's anyone out there that uh, would like to speak under public comment, then they need to give their name and they have four minutes to speak. Um, could someone let me know if there's anyone out there waiting? We have no one. Oh, we have one. No. Hand, we have one hand, uh, one hand raised from Andrew Kircher from the museum. Okay, then Andrew, are you on there? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, could you just give us your name and... Uh, and, uh, you have four minutes. Uh, certainly. Uh, Andrew Kircher from uh, the uh, museum. I live at 1815 Military, just a few blocks away from that. Um, I don't plan on using my whole full, my full four minutes, but uh, I just wanted to um, thank all of you for uh, considering on the agenda the uh, funding for the Huron Lightship. Uh, obviously, I think that's pretty important for our community. And I just wanted to uh, say how excited we are at the museum to be able to get that reopened and share that with not only the people who live here in the Blue Water area, but people from, frankly, all over the country and hopefully someday soon internationally again, uh, visiting the area. And what a lot of people might not realize is that the Huron Lightship is actually 100 years old this year and that it's a national historic landmark. So something that we should be really proud to have in our community. There's only about there's about 90,000 things listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and only about 2,500 of those are National Historic Landmarks. That's only like 3%. And it's right up there with Independence Hall or the St. Louis Arch, these things that we think of as, as pure Americana. It's given that same level of recognition. So it's a, a real boon for our community. I think uh, in some ways, there was a blessing in disguise last year when it was damaged. A lot of people realized um, just how vulnerable it was. And this repair work um, is going to be, you know, something important, keeping it around for another 50 years where it is. It's been a museum for 50 years. It was operating for 50 years. And it's cool to be able to celebrate a 100th anniversary of something like that. And like I said, at uh, us museum, we're very excited to get that open along with the rest of our sites and share that with uh, the community and all the people who come to visit us. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else that's out there? I don't hear anybody speaking up, so I'm going to close public comment and we will move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Uh, Council Member yeah. Ashford supported by Council Member Pemberton or was that Council no, Member Lamb? That was, uh, I just had, I just wanted. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, number six and eight removed. Okay, I was going to uh, ask for eight to be removed anyways. So, okay, no problem. Then we do still have some on the consent agenda. So only, actually we only have one other one on the consent agenda, but we already do have a motion. So we will take the vote. Council member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Um, the only item on the consent agenda then was receiving the proposed 2021 22 Downtown Development Authority budget and scheduling a public hearing for May the 10th to hear public comments from interested citizens on the proposed budget. 
And so we will move on to from the city manager number one. Accepting the quote from Apollo Fire Equipment Company in the amount of $60,653 for the purchase of pneumatic lift bags and rescue cushions for use by the fire department. Is there a motion? A motion. Support. I think uh, Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Councilmember Mosierak, got in there first. Um, is there any discussion? Madam Mayor, Chief Nicholson included a pretty lengthy packet with yes. pictures and photos. Uh, this would be about a 15 year lifespan to replace our existing airbags. Uh, we don't use them often, but when we do, it's a very critical situation. Um, we're also one of the uh, few fire departments in the entire county that have this capability. So we're kind of the big brother every other agency in the county looks up to for this uh, resource. Uh, so we'll be replacing that. You can affect a capitalization and depreciation schedule of about 15 years on this purchase. Okay. Any yeah. questions for Mr. Freed? Yeah, yeah. Council Member Mosierak. Hey, James, I'm just curious. Do you know, or maybe Chief might know, is there a life expectancy on those? Do we replace them after so long because they are just wore out or we can't rely on them or what, how often? So the manufacturer recommends 15 years, uh, but the ones we have now are about 15 years and they're already starting to see leaks and failures. Okay. And I think Thank if you look at the memo, uh, Chief Nicholson attached a memo as well where it notes some of those seam issues. Okay. Anyone else have any questions, discussion? Yeah, um, Mayor. Oh, I've got two here. Council <laughs> member uh, Ashford. Go ahead, Lamb. Oh, no, but... no, Ashford, you spoke up first. So go oh, ahead. Oh, okay. How many do we have currently? Um, I can let Chief Nicholson, he's on, he can address that for you. We'll see. If Chief, can you uh, unmute yourself? There we go. Hello, uh, this is Chief Nicholson, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, this purchase request will replace the entirety of our medium pressure air cushions, uh, which we have a count of four, and the majority of our high pressure lift bags, which the count is 17. Uh, we replaced a handful of the high pressure bags uh, back in 2018. But this uh, remaining inventory uh, does expire as far as the manufacturer's recommendations at the 15 year mark, plus the deficiencies we've noted. Uh, so you'll see this count, it'll get spread amongst uh, the command vehicle chief to the frontline engine at Central Station and our trench rescue trailer. So these get spread amongst uh, a handful of uh, apparatus uh, for a variety of responses. Okay, and how often do we use the other ones, uh, Chief? We tend, we tend to use the high pressure lift bags a bit more uh, just because they uh, lend themselves to, to uh, small spaces. The medium pressure airbags, the, the big reason we need these, some of the photos I have attached, you'll see that uh, they're using trench rescue. Uh, so we use these bags to shore up the void spaces behind trench panels in the, in the event of a collapse. So it's a critical, absolute need as far as our trench rescue program. Okay, uh, and the last question for me is that, and, and with this purchase, uh, this, uh, so we're rebinding from, the, this is like state of the art, more newer updated than the ones we had before? They're compatible uh, with the remainder of not only our air pressure bags, but our pneumatic struts. And they have all the updated controllers. One of the problems I had with uh, some of our legacy controllers for these devices uh, is we can't get parts for them anymore. So uh, minor rebuilds to actual functional operation. We've had to mothball controllers over the years because we just can't get parts. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mira. Uh, Council Member Lamb, you had a question? Yes, I was just wondering if there's um, some type of protocol or when do we actually like test these devices or is there anything that we do like that? So every year we conduct an annual test. They're partially pressurized and then check for leaks. Uh, we have a leak down test and then we check for leaks with the soap mixture. Unfortunately, we can't pressure test these uh, at maximum capacity the same way, say, an SCBA cylinder is tested to a DOT standard because we would risk just actually destroying the bag. So that's why there's like this uh, 15 year shelf life expectancy is uh, as time and the environment degrades the rubber, uh, they become non-repairable. Any other questions for the chief? 
Thank you, Chief Nicholson. Uh, we will take a vote now. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item two. Accepting the single source quote from corrosion prevention technologies in the amount of $9,000 for the replacement of the cathodic protection system located on the Huron Lightship. Is there a motion? So moved. Council Member Lamb, is there support? Council Member Mosierak? Is there any questions? Madam Mayor, just point out that we did make a decision here to repair the wires is about $1,000, but that would only get us maybe a few more years left in that system. And then we would need to go to a full uh, cathodic protection replacement. By doing it now, because the ship and everything's exposed, we're saving about five or $6,000 in labor cost. Whereas if we just repaired it, we would have to dig that all out and expose the ship in just a few short years to replace the whole thing. So that's the reason why we're going with a full replacement instead of just a repair, because the ship is in a very unique situation where it is exposed, it is, um, there's no backfill yet, which we will be bringing proposals to you at the next meeting for repair and backfill of the, of the backfill and the decking. Okay. We do any own. Que any questions for Mr. Freed? Uh, yeah, uh, James. Yeah, uh, I know Andrew had actually contacted all our council members before on the condition of the uh, light uh, of the uh, of this concern right here. Will this complete all of that uh, uh, issues that they had with that? I don't know because Andrew hasn't reached out to the city administration on this. So I'd like to hear from Andrew and his list before I can comment on that. I haven't seen the list. Uh -huh. oh, okay. No, I think you did comment. I had it in my notes that uh, when he was calling us about the, 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 the that, that, that is what is before us tonight. But, I, would uh, encourage, I would encourage Andrew to go through the museum director, uh -huh. the city manager's office on those types of requests because I have not been briefed on that. Oh, okay. Well, you did respond, so thank you for responding back then. Yeah, I just kept it because I wanted to see what happened. I'm glad we got to it. Uh, to it, I just wanted to make sure if, if this was it as far as that particular uh, concern was brought before us. So, thank you. I believe he reached out quite some time ago. It was not yeah. recent. It was. No, I didn't. I didn't ago. say. Yeah. yeah, I didn't say recent. I said before. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. Got my notes. Yeah. That's but all it, I was asking. Yeah. Yep. I'll Is there any other questions or comments? We'll take the vote. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council <clears throat> Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Rep. Yes. Item three. Accepting the quote from Michigan Police Equipment in the amount of $80,387.55 for the purchase of new firearms and equipment. Is there a motion? So mm -hmm. uh, Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Council Member Pemberton. Uh, is there discussion? Uh, Madam Mayor and Council, this will replace uh, the uh, duty weapons for all the police officers. It will also provide them with a backup weapon, a holster as well. Uh, part of the reason why we got a discounted amount here is because in our proposal we sent out, we requested trading in their current guns, which are about 10 years old. And so we're trading the current guns to the, to the dealer to get a discount on the new weapons. These weapons will last about 10 years, given the amount of, uh, they have to do what's called qualifying shooting every year to make sure they can hit a target. I stopped out there. I did not hit the target, uh, so I will not be getting one. However, you can, you can so this is, a, this is a once in every 10 year cost. Now, if an officer comes and goes, we keep the weapon. So if an officer goes to a different agency or it doesn't work out, there are weapons, we keep them and we only offer them to the officer upon retirement, their duty weapon. So we'll provide them two weapons each, their main duty weapon and a backup weapon, the holsters accordingly for that. It'll be a 10 year uh, depreciation schedule. 
When was the last time they were replaced? A little over 10 years ago. Uh, Council Member Ashford, you look like you had a question. Uh, I did, no, I didn't. Oh, you lit up, so. <laughs> oh. Okay, no, that's no problem. Is there anybody that has a question? Discussion? James? Yes. We keep both, if someone leaves, goes on to another assignment to another department, we keep both weapons? Correct. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? I assume this was an anticipated expense. Um, we'll have to adjust our budget for this, uh, but we were able to do it because of good trade-in rates right now on the weapons. Those We don't totally get the value that we're getting on the trade-ins It's just because the market is in such a way. So it's more cost beneficial to do it now than wait till July. Um, okay. These will also include the latest uh, scopes for better accuracy and rapid, rapid deployment. So that's one of the benefits as well, to have our officers have that latest technology. Okay. If there's nothing else, we will take the vote. Council Member Mojarek? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll move on to resolutions. The first one, please. Approving the proposal with Tetra Tech Incorporated for professional engineering services for a permanent standby generator at the North Service Center. Is there a motion? So moved. Uh, Councilmember Lamb, supported by Councilmember Mosierak. Is there discussion? Yes, Mayor Rep. I was wondering, uh, there is no cost to these, to the, at least number one and two. So. I was going to ask the same question. They're in our professional. We have a professional uh, service fee that we have with Tetra Trek, so it would go along with the professional service fee, which we have on file. Okay, and what is that fee? Do you know? It depends. It's based on what work they have. So we have a relatively general scope, but we don't have a detailed what it will actually be until the project's done. So Tom, it's, it's so many hours for a PE. It's so many hours for a deputy PE. It's based on what they need when they get out there. Okay, so is there a cap on that or something or a range? I don't have that at this time. Oh, okay, not a problem. I should have called you before because I, I always, okay, thank you. Is there any other questions? Okay, we'll take a vote. Council member Pemberton? Yes. Council member Ruiz? Yes. Council member Archibald? Yes. Council member Ashford? Yes. Council member Lamb? Yes. Council member Mosierak? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item two. Approving the proposal with Tetra Tech Incorporated for professional engineering services for dry weather screening and wet weather sampling and testing services. Is there a motion? <clears throat> I moved. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, is there a second? Second. Council Member Lamb, is there discussion? Madam Mayor and Council, this is required under our NP uh, DES uh, permit for our, our discharge. What essentially it is, is we monitor the outfall. So if it didn't rain and there's liquid going through the stormwater drain, it means someone's dumping illicitly. We have to track that, we have to test that, we have to report that to the state. So this is to stay in compliance of our permit. And it's something we always do. And Tetra Tech has been doing it. Is there any questions? We will take the vote. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Rep? Yes. Item three. Approving the sale of the vacant lot at 2600 Vaness Street for $500. Is there a motion? So moved. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, is there a second? Right. Council Member Pemberton? Any discussion? 
met a mayor and council. It's a non-buildable lot, uh, so we can't build a house on it. And as we've done in the past, the neighbor's willing to take care of it, mow of it, and pay taxes on it. So we'll sell it to the neighbor and get it back on the tax rolls. And it will, we'll have, we won't have to pay to have it mowed anymore. Anything from council? Questions? Mayor Rep. Yes, council member Lamb. Um, any issues that we could think of that would be a zoning problem at all? Nope, in fact, this will, uh, if they end up merging the lots, it'll provide more, uh, more, uh, more space for the current homeowner should they wanna build an accessory building or something. Okay, thank you. There's nothing else, we will take the vote. <clears throat> Council member Archibald? Yes. Council member Ashford? Yes. Council member Lamb? Yes. Council member Mosierak? Yes. Council member Pemberton? Yes. Council member Ruiz? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item four. Authorizing reimbursement of expenses from bond proceeds. Is there a motion? So moved. Council member Mosierak supported by council member Lamb. I wonder James, if you could give a little explanation just for the yep. record, please. We are not actually you're not actually um, authorizing me to go borrow money or anything like that. What we're doing is we're putting out notice that should we want to bond for water upgrades in the next uh, couple of years, that we're able to reimburse ourselves for projects this year and projects we've already done. So meaning you can reach back 18 months into the past and bond out those projects and reimburse yourself with bond proceeds if we believe that financing is in the best cost benefit analysis for certain projects. So we're still in the middle of that analysis, but if we don't pass this resolution, then that 18 month window begins to slide and projects fall off that can't be refinanced. So it essentially allows us to start that clock that should we decide that financing some of these larger capital projects at the water plant and the water, water stations, that we can do that. We haven't come to a recommendation for council yet, um, but we'll bring that in the coming months. So really you're just starting the clock. You're not authorizing the issuance of bonds or borrowing or anything like that. Okay. We Any questions this, from anybody on council? We did this similar to the sewer uh, work back in February, March, I believe. You did, you did an identical one for sewer. Okay. Any questions? We will take the vote. Council member Ashford? Yes. Council member Lamb? Yes. Council member Mosierak? Yes. Council member Pemberton? Yes. Council member Ruiz? Yes. Council member Archibald? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item five. Receiving the proposed 2021-22 budget and scheduling a public hearing from May 10th, 2021 to hear public comments from interested citizens on the proposed budget. Is there a motion? So moved. And support. Council member Lamb supported by council member Pemberton. Do you wanna give us a brief uh, overview, James? Yes, absolutely. So before you, I have fulfilled my constitutional and charter obligation to the city manager's office to bring you forth a balanced budget. Um, this, this budget is balanced um, while funding necessary capital, protecting city services uh, and programming, um, specifically, specifically investments into our streets, investments into our water and sewer, investments into our recreation facilities, into our, our police and fire. Um, I have said this before, this would not be possible without three important components. One, the strong leadership of the mayor and council on some very difficult decisions you've made. Two, the tremendous sacrifice of our employees over the last 10 years and understanding. We closed our pension systems. We reduced our, our benefits. We were able to reduce our unfunded liability costs. We were able to refinance those unfunded liability costs for a savings of more than $40 million. We're seeing those savings in this annual budget. And the third component was the support of the taxpayer support here on. Without the public safety millage, without the parks and recreation millage, we would not be able to provide the same level of police and fire services and recreation programming and infrastructure. So those three components are what led to a very successful budget you have before you that protects city services, even in light of the challenges of COVID. 
There's been additional expenses with COVID to protect our city workers, to protect our, our patrons who come into our facilities. Um, this funds all of that. So it was a, it's a tight budget. We are not, you know, surplusing a tremendous amount, but it's balanced and it's balanced going forward. This is a projection we have not had for the last uh, 10 years. So this will be the second year of balanced budgets without cuts. So I am grateful to all of you. I'm grateful to the workers, but I'm also very grateful to the support of uh, the taxpayers for entrusting us that additional money. Um, one of the things as well, if you look at the amount that we've accomplished, uh, we don't have a high administration uh, administration amount for the city of our size. That money, that, those uh, four mills can be seen as you drive through the city, you see new park infrastructure, you see programming going on, you see a new fire trucks, two new fire trucks rolling through our city. You see officers on the road with new officers who are getting replaced as other people retired instead of shrinking the force. Um, same with our fire department, the staffing levels have been protected. Uh, we wanted the taxpayers to see and feel the effects of their investment on their daily lives. And we think we're doing a pretty decent job of that. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Freed? Okay, then we will take the vote to schedule the hearing. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierek? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item six. Receiving the proposed capital improvement program and scheduling a public hearing from May 10th, 2021 to hear public comments from interested citizens on the proposed capital improvement program. Is there a motion? So move. Move. Support. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Council Member Ashford. Is there any comments or questions for on this one? Yeah, uh, Mayor, uh, I just asked for this to uh, to to uh, come off the uh, consent agenda because um, I noticed, you know, going through the capital improvement plan, I know we have, you know, some kind of strategy and I just wanted to ask James, what is the procedure? Do we prioritize any of this or how do we go to which one, you know, we want to put forth? So we do that based on essentially subject matter experts within our departments who go through and evaluate the needs of the streets needs of the water and the sewer and our infrastructure and then they do a priority assessment and this is essentially a recommendation based on the experts within our uh, our agency and our and our, our, our organization on what we believe is the priorities for infrastructure moving forward now some of that is based on some pretty analytical data like pacer evaluations of our street systems also complete streets initiative meaning if we're going to work on a street we also evaluate the water and sewer on infrastructure underneath it so some of the driving uh, factors behind water and sewer projects are also by streets getting replaced on top of them. So it's all integrated together where you see some water and sewer projects, you also see street projects, and that's kind of a synchronized approach to our capital, uh, uh, capital planning. Okay, and so uh, after that, given that explanation, uh, when we do uh, select the project to come forth, the capital project, how is that, uh, how is that executed? So we make recommendations in our annual budget. So you have a six year capital improvement plan, but your budget only funds the first year of it. So every year we pull forward the next year, we reevaluate and then we bring it to council in a budget as a recommendation. And ultimately it's the mayor and council's decision. Oh, okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? We will take the vote. Council member Mosierek? Yes. Council member Pemberton? Yes. Council member Ruiz? Yes. Council member Archibald? Yes. Council member Ashford? Yes. Council member Lamb? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item eight. Resolution to endorse and encourage mask use in public spaces, limitations of gatherings to allow at least six feet of distancing between people not in the same household and COVID-19 vaccines. Is there a motion? So moved. Council Member Ashford, is there a second? Second. Council Member Lamb. I assume Council Member Ashford that you had a comment you wanted to make on this. 
Yeah, uh, Mayor Rep, I just wanted to ask you, uh, given the um, the significance and the, the crucial crucial nature of this resolution, if the um, city clerk could read the letter coming from the uh, uh, St. Clair County uh, Health Department. Is Dr. Did... Mercantant? Yes, Dr. Mercantant. It's not that long. No, it is not. It was Dr. Mercantant who asked that we put this resolution on uh, in support of uh, uh, encouraging people to wear masks and social distance and and uh, wash their hands and to get a vaccine. So we have complied with that if it gets adopted. Uh, do you have that, Cindy, in front of you? Pulling it up right now, sorry. No problem. If not, I do have it. Okay. Mayor and Council, while she's pulling that up, I will note uh, that none of these are requirements or orders or anything that, like that. It's more of a public relations yeah. campaign to say, hey, we encourage this. Uh, we appreciate the citizens doing this. And what's remarkable is that, you know, our police officers are not down there arresting people who aren't wearing masks and shaking people down. And we see tremendous compliance throughout our city. So I applaud our residents on that for doing uh, their part, uh, especially within our city building. We see people come in with masks on. It's very rare when someone doesn't come in with a mask on. Uh, so we really are appreciative of that. I would also note as well that there is a walk-in vaccine clinic at the SC4 field house, I believe on Wednesday um, in the city of Port Huron. So for those who want their vaccine, they can just walk in and get it. Okay, okay go ahead. Whereas the SARS-CoV-2 transmission has resulted in several waves of disease. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think she wants the, the letter. Oh, the letter, oh, I'm sorry. All right. Okay. One of the most important responsibilities ensconced in the Michigan Public Health Code Act 368 of 1978 is for local public health to inform and protect the public health. As such, it is our duty to inform you of the dire threat of the SARS-CoV-2 virus and the profound impact it is having on the health and safety of our community. St. Clair County has had one of the most alarming rates of COVID-19 cases in the nation, resulting in lost workforce, suffering, and death. Likewise, it is our duty to suggest to you that this crisis is not going to stop unless dedicated and deliberate actions are taken by the majority of our citizens. We know that there is a diminishing response of voluntary compliance with people as the pandemic wears on, and yet our very lives depend on this. There is no amount of orders or laws that can create the type of response we need to control this virus. It needs to come from the conscience decisions of willingness of the people. In addition, opinion leaders like yourself can heavily influence this willingness. We respectfully request a public resolution from the Port Huron City Council that endorses and encourages one, mask use in public spaces, two, limitations of gathering to allow at least six feet of distancing between people not in the same household and three COVID-19 vaccines. Your personal and professional endorsement will go a long way to help us win this battle against COVID-19 and make the most of the positive impact you have on our community. I would be happy to meet with you in any capacity to discuss concerns or issues you may have. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. So then the resolution that's before us is uh, is, is uh, actually what she asked for. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, Cindy, for You're reading welcome. that. Is there any other discussion on this? I did notice that uh, one good piece of news is that uh, it, although it hasn't dropped tremendously, it is dropping in the last three reports that the county has put out and the state of Michigan's put out is that the rate of uh, a positive rate is going down across the state and in St. Clair County. So that's good news. Just needs to go down more and more people need to get vaccines. So right. we will take the vote. Council member Pemberton. Yes. Council member Ruiz. Yes. Council member Archibald. Yes. Council member Ashford. Yes. Council member Lamb. Yes. Council member Mosherek? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll move on to ordinances number one. Second reading and enactment. 
An ordinance to amend chapter 52 zoning article one in general and article four general and supplementary regulations of the Port Huron Code of Ordinances to regulate medical marijuana home occupations within the city of Port Huron. Is there a motion? So moved. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, is there a second? Council Member Mosrak. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Hey, Aaron Council, um, I have David Haynes on the line here, but he did advise me that his internet has been incredibly dicey, so he's gotten kicked off a few times. So, okay. uh, or he could just be making an excuse to get off. But he's on here um, if we have any questions for him. But this was essentially regulate um, caregivers and home grow operations for medical marijuana. Right now, um, we have nothing in place. We have people who are retrofitting homes without any inspection, who are uh, essentially skirting the law by saying, we have each bedroom is a caregiver, but all four bedrooms are different caregivers. So there's hundreds of plants in a single family home, creating odor issues and problems in the neighborhood. And this just allows us to put reasonable measures in place uh, to make sure that we have uh, safety in these homes and in these, in these facilities, but also not become a nuisance to the neighbors, which we've had, as I'm sure some of you have had heard as well, we've had some very serious complaints from people. And before this, we there's nothing we could do, but now we can have a little bit of uh, room to, to enforce uh, code violations and, and noise and, and noise and odor violations as well. David, are you there? Yes, I am. Good evening, right. Mayor, Rep, and Council. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Haynes? Well, it sounds like you don't have any 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 answers you have to give. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> James but did a great job. <laughs> um, we can take the vote. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. And ordinance number two, please. First reading, an ordinance to amend chapter 46 traffic and vehicles, article three, parking, stopping and standing and article four, impoundment <laughs> of vehicles of the Port Huron Code of Ordinances for the purpose of creating no parking tow away zones. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Council member Lamb supported by council member Ashford. Is there discussion? Madam Mayor and council, um, we're rational people. We're nice people here in the city of Port Huron. Uh, but we are having some issues with sometimes when people visit our community around Lakeside Beach and some other areas, we have put no parking zones up um, and we write them tickets. And we have literally had them look at us and say, just write me the ticket, I'm going in and leave their car in a no parking zone, which creates significant issues for traffic flow, but also we can't get a, a fire truck and an EMS rig is much wider than a normal vehicle. And when these cars are parked illegally, it creates a public safety issue. Uh, we've written tickets. Uh, they don't move them. Um, and now we have to have, and then the other thing is we'll write a ticket and they won't come out of the park or beach all day. So that vehicle's there all day. And we can't let that road be blocked up all day. So this essentially gives our police officers the authority to gently and safely transport these vehicles into a lovely lot for them to pick up at a later time at their cost. Uh, so this will be specifically, it'd be used in the no parking zones. We'd be used in a very limited areas, just where we're having some significant issue. Um, but we just want to, you know, help people out. Any questions for Mr. Free? I've personally sat out there and watched someone park illegally. And when an officer has mentioned it to him, they've literally said, just write me a ticket and walk away. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Which doesn't solve the problem. No, it doesn't. We really don't want your fine money, your $20. We don't, we don't need it. We just want you to move your car so we can get yeah. a fire truck through an EMS through on hot summer days. Any questions? We will take the vote. Council member Archibald? Yes. Council member Ashford? Yes. Council member Lamb? Yes. Council member Mosierak? Yes. Council member Pemberton? Yes. Council member Ruiz? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. That concludes our regular agenda for tonight. Uh, a couple things. Um, 
May 6th, uh, the National Day of Prayer, which we normally have a breakfast uh, honoring this, but obviously we're not having one this year, but uh, there is going to be a service in the North parking lot of McMorrin at, starting at noon, a short service, and people will, uh, would just bring their drive in and park and tune into the radio station that's going to be announced at that time and listen to the service in their car so that they can be uh, socially distanced. So we still are doing something, but that's uh, what, what it will be. Uh, May 7th is um, downtown is the art on the Avenue, which is also coincides with the first Fridays of the month that they're celebrating downtown where you can come down, walk around, get your beverage, do whatever you wanna do still through our downtown. So that is May 7th. Uh, so we've got, those two things coming up next week. Uh, it is, uh, we do hope to have our meetings in May in person, socially distanced with masks in our uh, main council chambers. So at this point, we are looking toward May 10th regular council meeting being in the council chambers. Of course, I have to say subject to change, assuming things continue as they are, we, uh, we are hoping to, to meet back in person again. So um, then we will also have our workshop that same week for our budget. And then that would also be in person. All this, of course, like I said, is subject to change based on the conditions in the community at that time. So certainly we will uh, give plenty of notice if it changes. And is there anything else from the council that they'd like to mention before we adjourn the meeting? Madam Mayor and Council, I would just inform you all that the canal dredging has begun. We begun dredging it last week. Uh, in my eight years as city, well, seven and a half years as city manager, this will be my eighth summer of dredging. We have never had this much sand. It was filled all the way up to the Tainter Gate, where we actually had to build a land bridge and they had to take a hydro hoe up the canal to the Tainter Gate and then begin digging backwards. So typically it takes like a day, two days to open that thing up. We're now going out a week and they're hopeful that they'll be able to have the canal opened up by the end of the week. They'll still have to move the dredging. So we have been working on that. We have a small mountain there that we've been moving uh, to Holland and South where the DEQ has permitted us to put it back into the sand cycle. Um, so for residents who are hoping to get their boat out soon, we are, we are working on it. They have two hydro hose out there. They've had so much sand that they had to bring in a portable fuel farm because they had to refuel the, the hydro hose that much. They brought their own fuel farm out there. So we're working on it. It's a tremendous amount of sand. Thank you. Anybody have anything else? Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Ashford. Adjourn.